What up, guys? We got the brand new B Savior U5 adapter. This is specifically made for the PlayStation 5, and you can hook up a ton of devices to this thing. Zero latency and never disconnect again. This will work with your Fight Stick, your Switch Pro controller, Xbox One controllers, PS4, USB steering wheels. This will also work for your Zen Matrix and Zen Apex Titan 2. Chrono Zen Rhea Snow S1. Uh, this thing is retailing right now for about 50 bucks. Been playing around with it for a little bit. But let's go ahead and get into it. I know you guys are going to love this thing. The B Savior team, which also makes that PlayStation Elite controller, the B Savior, uh, the B Loader controller uh, that I showcased here on the channel some time back. You guys are going to absolutely love this thing. And uh, it's pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get into it. All right, so let's crack this thing open and see what we got. I know this comes with the dongle itself, the B Savior U5, as well as a data cable. All right, so we got our data cable here. Let's go ahead and get this thing open. And then, of course, we also have our B Savior U5. Now, I've been told that this is simple and straightforward. There's no computer connections needed, no firmware, no updates uh, needed at all. All you have to do is hook this directly up to your PlayStation 5 and everything should be straightforward and it should pass through and work. Obviously, you will need to have some form of authentic controller in order to register on the device. But after that, everything should be good to go. And here's a quick size comparison test. We have the U5 next to the Kronos Zen. As you can see, this is the form factor. That's not exactly how this would hook up. In this particular situation, you would hook up the uh, U5 directly to the PlayStation 5, and then you would run or run or daisy chain the Chrono Zen directly off of the back connection. But I uh, wanted to bring this out so you guys could get a better idea about how this compares. And for a quick size comparison test, we have the wireless adapter for the Xbox Elite controllers uh, sized up next to the B Savior U5. See, it's a lot smaller. So next we have all three. You gotta give you guys a better look, size comparison about what you're getting into. This is a pretty phenomenal device considering I remember when the Chrono Zen first came out, a lot of people wanted to use this alongside the Zim Apex and I knew it would work. However, I just didn't physically have one to fully test it. But now we definitely have a dedicated unit that right out of the box will work for your Zim Apex. Uh, it'll assist with all of your scripts with zero latency and will act as a bridge between your PlayStation 5 and your other gaming controller adapters to give you that overall ultimate gaming experience. And next we have the B Savior controller. This is the Elite controller that was sent over to me a few months ago. I uh, just thought I'll bring this out so you guys can get a better idea about when you pair this up. Works flawlessly with the PS5 and everything integrated. Uh, remember this specific controller has scripts built in and you can find both of these on their website. Uh, remember the B Savior U5 is 50 bucks and the B Savior uh, B Loader Elite controller retails for about $160. All right, so now that we have our PlayStation 5 on, we're gonna get this set up with the B-Savior U5. So I've been playing around with this for quite some time and it's pretty fun, really simple and straightforward. However, there are a couple of things that I definitely need to inform you about. This particular cable, the company sent over for review, this is one of the cables, uh, this is the cable that comes with the B-Savior U5. This is only meant to charge the unit or use it as an additional unit uh, for, power purposes uh, this will not work with the controller kind of frustrating i'm glad i figured that out here to let you guys know so if you plan on using this with your xbox elite controller or your playstation 5 this is not meant to be used as a data cable this is charge only uh, for any one of the cables so pretty much just toss that out 
You're gonna go ahead, you're gonna insert this into your PS5, but I definitely wanna warn you, um, I would suggest hooking up all your controllers directly first to this unit before getting set up. So um, this is a data cable that I grabbed from one of my SSD controllers. It's not that long, but it definitely does the job. It charges the controller and it operates as a data cable. So we're gonna go ahead and plug that into the top. And then we're gonna go ahead and insert this into the PS5. But actually before I do that, I'm gonna go ahead and plug in my Xbox Elite controller. And that's all you need to do. Again, I highly suggest hooking up anything to the top first or unplugging it from the PS5. Reason being is because when you insert this into the PS5, uh, you don't wanna apply pressure to it. As you can see, let's go ahead and get this inserted. So you don't want to put anything directly into the unit and potentially break it or add additional weight because as you can see, uh, it's kind of finicky there. So it's already set up and ready to go. Uh, there are a couple of other procedures that you do need to do with this setup. We're going to go ahead and hold in the PlayStation button. And we already have connectivity. Let's go ahead and go to settings. And we want to go down to uh, accessories general and communication method now uh, this particular playstation was already set up for us uh, to use bluetooth you want to make sure that you select the option use usb cable that's the second option there on the bottom we're going to go ahead and back up and once you already have that done then you're pretty much good to go in order to set this up uh, with any potential controller and for today's review we also have included a Titan 2, which this is also compatible with, a Zim Apex, which I don't have, a Kronos Max Plus, and we also have the Kronos Zen gaming adapter. So all of these are compatible. And then of course we have an original Xbox 360 Ori Fight Stick. This is an authentic controller. Uh, this will work. I've been navigating with this. Uh, some of the games that I've been testing with this don't take full functionality with the controllers because you need an analog and not the D-pad. But however, it does respond and this does work and this will allow pass-through for your PlayStation 5. And as you can see, once we're up and moving around, we can navigate around the full menu. And we also have full functionality on the Xbox Elite Controller too. So uh, this is working with the stock firmware right out of the box. There wasn't anything else that I needed to do with it. So let's go ahead and get into a little bit of gameplay and uh, just see how it responds. You do need to be connected or hardwired pretty much for the entire time in order for this uh, to work. I do know that there were some other connections that could work with the Chrono Zen uh, that the B-Loader team did release, but this is just a simple, straightforward solution uh, in order to get you up and running. Now, again, if you are planning on using your Chrono Zen with your PlayStation 5 with this B-Savior U5, please keep in mind, uh, don't have it running to the computer. That's how you get detected and cause a bunch of issues because uh, if you have this running directly to the computer at the same time, that is what causes issues and that's why a lot of people got scared in the past uh, when using the Chrono Zen uh, with PlayStation 5 or even Xbox and those Call of Duty games. So let's go ahead and hit this. And as you can see, we got full functionality.
All right, so now we're going to hook up the B Savior with the Chrono Zen. This is the Xbox Elite controller going into this first port here. Now we're going to hook up the Zen to the U5. We're gonna make sure we turn the PlayStation 5 controller on first. Now you can see we have full connection through the Chrono Z. If I need to enable any of the scripts for playing Call of Duty, Gears of War 5, obviously we don't have to worry about that. Grand Theft Auto, Halo, we don't have to worry about that one. Or Warzone, Need for Speed, all the preloaded scripts, Mortal Kombat will work for the PlayStation 5 feeding into the B-Savior U5. All right, guys, we're going to quickly show you how to hook up the Titan 2 now to your PlayStation 5 using the B-Savior U5 adapter. So we have this going into the U5. This will allow you to use all of your, mat, uh, your packs and scripts. This is going to feed this in directly into the back of the unit. Um, I don't have anything preloaded right now, so I just wanted to show you that the connectivity will be at zero milliseconds and everything will feed through. All right, so one of the things that I wanted to make mention of is before you connect your Titan 2 directly to your PS5, you have to make sure that it's on the PS5 protocol. Currently, mine's is set up to automatic. It didn't work in this instance. So you have to go back, make sure you have your firmware and everything updated for your Titan 2 and then make sure it's set to protocol PS5 directly, and then that way it'll work. So uh, I had an issue with that while I was actually doing that, but I did, however, make that course correction. I'll also have a follow-up video regarding the Titan 2 in the next coming days as well. Now, the only other concern I would have about this kind of adapter is how far it sticks out directly from the unit. Uh, if it's sticking out directly from the PS5, you run up against it, you bump it, uh, something happens. Again, this could be a really issue, a, a big issue for failure because it'll just break off uh, there in the middle. But other than that, there's really no other issues, but uh, that could be a concern because of how it sticks away uh, from the unit. I wish it had like a USB uh, adapter or an additional uh, cord that will allow you to uh, extend it. I'm not sure if you probably can extend it to see if it will still work. I could probably uh, try that. But for me, it looks like it'll be a lot easier to run a direct cable to it, use it as an adapter directly from uh, the unit. So that way, kind of like how the Crota Zen is set up in the Titan, you have to run a separate USB. You don't have the actual hardware itself sticking out of the unit. Uh, because just imagine somebody walks by, you accidentally 
bump, bump up against it. Uh, you could probably put this adapter on the back of the unit, but again, it might stick away from the wall. But uh, all in all, it's not really too much of a big issue, but it could be an issue uh, depending upon your environment and uh, how you treat your stuff. So anyway, I just wanted to make mention of that. Uh, those are just some of the thoughts that came to mind when uh, working with this uh, adapter.
All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I know it was a little bit lengthy. Again, the process to hook this up only takes like 30 seconds. You just uh, plug in your authenticated controller and then plug in the controller you wanna use uh, for gameplay. But I wanted to make sure that it was lengthy enough so you guys could see the actual connection, that there were no disconnects, there were no uh, latency issues whatsoever. And again, this is pretty straightforward. I mean, I love this and considering that a lot of you are having issues right now with the Bricks device. I know it's on the Xbox, uh, but you won't have this kind of problem on the PlayStation 5. Uh, this is a dedicated adapter. It is not a specific controller that has its own encoder board. You guys are gonna have a lot of fun with this. I know it took a long time for the PS5 to finally get decrypted, and now you guys are able to hook up almost any controller directly to your PS5 in less than 30 seconds. So if you guys really love this video, please let me know. Consider liking and subscribing. Share the video, please. I'll catch you guys later. Until next time. Have a good night. Bye-bye.